Okay, this is going to be a single segment run on Ultraviolence. Uh, this is a WOD called Father Beans from the uh, id Games FTP. It was released in 1995, um, and it's a replacement for the first episode of Doom. So, here we go. Okay, so normally what you want to do is you want to get into this corner and get the shotgun without getting trapped by the spectre. Then you can hopefully promote a bit of infighting when the shotgunners are shooting from the back. Um, as a first level, this is kind of it's a nice small map, but it's also uh, it's kind of it's got three keys in it, which I don't think is you don't particularly need to have uh, in a first level. You just want to sort of introduce the player to what's going on. Um, straight away get the rocket launcher, very reminiscent of uh, map one of Doom 2. Um, so this is into the second section, so there's a blue key door up here as well as the red key. Um, and what you're going to find I think throughout this WOD is that there's this repeated motif of multiple keys within a level but not necessarily the complexity of the level to warrant having all three keys so often we'll find that you open a door a key door only to find the next key that you need right behind that door uh, and so it's just a lot of backwards and forwards a case in point open a red door there's the next key that we need, the blue key. And we're going to go down here for a secret to get a computer map. So here we go, back through the section again for the blue key. And this time we're going to get the machine gun, the chain gun rather. Uh, then it's back out into the central area. So we're going to take out... Uh, two of the remaining enemies and then we're going to take the last secret and we've got a, a shotgunner here and if we go to the other side of uh, the outside area it's a lift which is going to bring us the last enemy which is an imp grab the soul sphere and there we go that's uh, all the secrets all the kills so it's just a question of getting out of here Okay, so straight away at the start of uh, level two, we get a uh, mega armor. I think this is this this uh, this level has is more reminiscent of uh, that first episode of Doom because there's a very straightforward path from the start to the exit, and there's just. Uh, lots of places you can go along the way which don't really add much to getting you to the exit but they do sort of allow for ammo and other pickups um, once you've cleaned out that section you can enough of the monsters have wandered over in the courtyard that you can start to take them out through the window so t this is almost the last section of the map if you were just going purely on speed you get the blue key you come through this door and then off to the left is the exit and um, if we go around the right hand side there's a couple of extra monsters and there's uh, an extra health kit or two um, so in theory this is actually a very short short map to get for just the shortest route from start to finish uh, there's an extra chain gun down here but we're going to have a look at uh, some of the extra bits so there's a jump here uh, it's worth remembering that the level designer has put a jump in here um, because later on there's there's I think there's an unintended jump that you can shortcut an episode uh, uh, a level with um, but this takes us to the courtyard area that we were sniping at earlier um, so there's quite a few shotgunners and imps but given that um, would you know we've already got a rocket launcher I, I, with this is played through on ultra violence I feel like there could have been um, a few more enemies out here um, 
And then we have this underground sewer section, which is it's quite nice to have that in contrast to the building above. So we've only got three kills left and two secrets. So as we we technically got everything that we need to get out of the uh, out of the level, it's just a question of picking up those two secrets. So if we come back down here, uh, there are three enemies by the secret, so uh, by the exit. So we take this secret out. If we can find the button, there's the button, and that's going to lower the soul sphere that that we saw earlier. And um, the uh, a switch has appeared here um, and what we have down here is a BFG and and sort of uh, a lot of cells um, and that's that's the other main thing you're going to see in uh, this episode is uh, a, an overpowering of the player there's um, not only if we've got a mega armor and a, uh, and a soul sphere on this level but obviously we've got a, a rocket launcher and a lot of rockets as well there's not really enough um, there's not enough resistance at this point really to uh, warrant quite warrant giving us the BFG this early there's not uh, there's not going to be enough encounters to say um, that this is enough uh, ammo to have been given um, I mean we're nearly at 100 uh, shells already um, you are never going to want for ammo in this wad. And this, this, this level is going to lead us out to the secret level as well once we've uh, completed most of the level and this is where we'll get to map 9 Just, uh, another thing that's I think of as being sort of reminiscent of that first Romero uh, episode is like a big big nukage pit in the middle of an area usually near an exit and this this courtyard is quite nicely designed it's got nice high walls with um, some imps that can shoot down on you um, and obviously there's a nice variety of monsters in there spectres pinkies zombies and shotgunners the problem is of course is that you're so overladen with ammo at this point that there's there's nothing uh, forcing you to go in you know you've just, you know you've got plenty of ammo just to um, snipe from the doorway rather than actually have to go in because you're going to need the ammo but here's another another key door where you just walk through and the the next key you need is just sitting there um, that one was at least guarded by a few more monsters than usual but we're going to have the same thing here. Yellow door opens and then there's a blue key just sitting behind it. I just think that, you know, that yellow key could have been placed, or the, the blue key that we just picked up could have been placed down in this room a bit further away. Um, and you would just feel like the player was having to do a bit more to get to that key because we could have just picked up that blue key and you might have been because we did pass the blue door earlier once you get that blue key you might be tempted to go back when in fact you have to come all the way down here to flick this switch um, so yeah I just uh, I think it's just there was the potential to uh, have things run out a bit longer that's the area we're sniping there is the area behind the blue door that we're about to go to um,
So we head back, we get some health, get this shotgun. Walk around to the blue door. So this will be the last enemy that we take on, is the pinky. Uh, and what you're supposed to do is you just jump out of this window. And then there's an area down here where you can pick up a few bits and pieces and there's a lift back up into the main section of the level. And there's a backpack round on the other side. Then we come back in through here and we go back round the corner for the blue door. And then uh, the way I had been doing this when I practiced the level was doing an SR50 through this window and in through the other window. But what I noticed doing it this time is that there's actually a ledge you can walk along. There's actually not a need to jump across. But that takes us out onto the secret level. And um, this is probably the least interesting map of, of this WOD. Um, there's only 21 monsters. Um, so at this point I was thinking that we were probably going to encounter something fairly big at this point because you know we've been given the BFG, we've been in one of the levels, we've been given plenty of rockets and so and then you see these two big sort of um, monster doors and you think ah it's going to be something behind there and so we clear out a lot of the more pedestrian enemies, the imp and the uh, pinky. There's Spectre down here and there's two more imps in the central tower. I mean I quite like the shape of this this would be quite a good sort of uh, a side style uh, slaughter map if there was a, a bit more going on. There was more than 20 monsters in here. And I suppose to a degree this would be a, a, a difficult level to pistol start, but if you were if you were pistol starting this level, you certainly wouldn't need the sort of 20 or so rockets and the rocket launcher that we've just picked up. So, um, on the whole, I mean, we're 20 of 21 monsters already, so. I just, there was a missed opportunity here for something big and interesting, I think, but, um, and in vulnerability, I, I again, we're, this is ultra violence, and I, it's not like I'm this incredibly gifted Doom player, um, it is simply that this is, um, this is not a level that really requires an invulnerability, it's not that difficult, I wonder, um, I wonder how the playtesting went, and whether it was done by the creator, or whether they got someone else to do it, and whether that was... Um, maybe if this could have done with a bit more playtesting and having the amount of ammo taken down. Here's our final enemy, a lost soul. Um, I do like that there's nested secrets in this level though. Um, again, that's uh, that's something I think of as, as being quite true of the first uh, Doom episode is that there's, in more than one place, there's a secret within a secret. And that obviously goes back as far as... Um, uh, E1M1 of Wolfenstein 3D where the uh, very first level of the game has the secret within a secret that takes you out to the secret level. There's nothing there. Is our first Kako Demons of this episode. And here we have another uh, Mega Armor. If we wait on here, use a couple of our rockets to clear out the Lost Souls, we back up, there's actually a radiation soup to send behind you, uh, So, which if you're not paying attention you can miss. Um, so we get our first key, which is the red key, so we come back out into this initial T-junction. Um, and there's a barrel in the middle here that's kind of good to get. 
usually takes a bit out of the pinky, usually wipes out the imp for you. And another rocket launcher in the blue key. So there is at least a bit of an encounter that time before you get to the key. You, you wouldn't be able to just dash straight in, but again, here we are. Um, we open the blue key door and we immediately see uh, a body come flying towards us. Uh, we see that yellow key, uh, which we know is the next key we need, and it's just sitting there waiting for us. So it's back down to where we saw the cacos through the yellow door. There's a f switch to flick here, and then we want to go out through the left-hand door because this has opened up a secret passage where we can get a computer map. And when we run to the other side, there's a backpack. And when we come back into the yellow key room, we can get the megasphere, the megasphere, the soul sphere. Uh, and we now can move into this section. Once we take out these imps, there's actually a walk-in exit. So it's quite nice to have a, a, a different exit on that one where you just walk in rather than um, flicking a switch. One of the other things I would say about this wad as well is actually that the the levels do they don't ramp up so too much, but they do sort of they do develop over time. They go from being um, they vary in length, and some of the encounters become um, more involved. Um, I wonder how much of that is the levels being designed in order. So as the level designer is learning more, um, they are incorporating more, and they are, are making better. Uh, encounters so um, we get our first key there the red key and we snipe a few people through this window and then the pinky pick up the ammo that we need you see I mean there's a lot of ammo in this room for not that many monsters in there I do like this room on the right here, um, like a small little computer room. That feels like it could be a real room within a facility, you know, sort of a, a hardware room. We've got the door here with the yellow key behind it. And then that door there just leads us back out into the first room. Okay, so there's actually a good secret in here because the first time you clear out this room there's a a nukage pit in the middle uh, grab the blue key off the back shelf and um, and there is a, a an armor this green armor in there but there's also a radiation suit and you might you might think it's a bit much to put the radiation suit in there given that there's a small amount of nukage and everything but there is a secret door on the back and here we have a long path of nukage that we need to go through to cross two levels uh, and then there's a nice fight in the dark here and um, so you you got the monsters that are in with you in the nukage but you also have some that are at the end of the level including a baron who's just pitched up at the back so we'll switch out to the many rockets that we've accumulated at this point and take him down there we go so we've cleared out both sides and then we can hit this switch and then we can go back up through the the lifts to the original blue key room. So we'll head back to the original room and then we'll go through uh, the door that we didn't go through, which is this one. And then at the end of this, there's a blue key door with a big open sort of reactor style room, which looks kind of cool as well. At least I think it's a reactor. I'm not, not sure what the level design was intending but uh, we need to raise a bridge so that we can get into that exit so we'll go up this side and this is the side that we shot out from the red key room we go up here and this is very reminiscent of E1M3 of Doom um, in one of the secret areas towards the end where you get an invisibility and you have to snipe at uh, enemies that are outside firing in at you in the middle sit behind this window and take on that caco. Go around the other side and clear out what we're supposed to clear out on this side. There's a computer map in here. 
another room to clear out. But again, you know, this is ultra violence, and there's there's maybe three monsters in this room and three outside. And you just you just think there should be a little bit more. That's the switch that raises up the bridge, and now this caco has come over to see us over here. Okay. The monster closet has opened where we're going to find a mega armor. We're going to get that. And then we're going to backtrack to earlier in the level to pick up a, a soul sphere in the section that has opened up out there. There we go. There's a couple of shotgunners out here and a zombie man. Uh, this is not actually even, doesn't even count towards our secrets. This is just a, a room with a soul sphere. So we've got two more enemies. I think we've got a caco demon down in the reactor pit somewhere. Can we wake him up? Yeah, there he is. And then there's somebody behind the exit door. I think there's a an imp behind there. That's one. Let's scooch around. There's the other one. Okay, so you remember earlier I said that there was a jump um, that the level designer had put in uh, on the second level uh, so I think this is the level where we're going to be abusing a jump to shortcut about two-thirds of the level um, whether or not that is intended by the designer I'm not sure um, but nonetheless we can sort of bypass a, a lot of it by uh, an SR40 uh, jump across a, where a bridge should be Anything else up here? Hit the switch. Look down here, we'll wake everyone up. Yeah, we're going to have to jump down. There is a ring around this nukage that will let us take out this guy and then grab the seat. Armor bonus. Then there's another soul sphere here. We'll make our way up these stairs. Okay, yes. Yeah, so there's there's the exit there ahead of us. So if we can clear out those imps, which we can't from a distance, and then I've done that really badly. So then you can do a quick. No, not that one. It's the other one. So what you can do is you can go around these souls, uh, lost souls, you take out this guy and there's a lift you can go back up. So we'll have to give that jump another go. Clear these out over the windowsill. Is there anything more annoying than a lost soul? There really isn't. I know people don't like arch files, but... One more, clear him out. Okay, let's give this another try. That's better. So there you go. Um, there's no key doors to get to the exit, so that's why I assume that it's not intended. Um, I think the keys are in other bits of the level to make you do those bits to raise that bridge so that you can get across. Um, I think had they not wanted you to do that, they could have key doored part of the exit. There we go. Okay, so this is E1M7. So this is probably the strongest of the levels. Um, there's three good sections to it. Um, there's plenty of enemies to be using all of our accumulated ammo on. Um, 
it, uh, it is what the level has built towards. So there's a lot of, uh, in a couple of the earlier episodes, areas brush up against each other and we we'll see that here again. So this uh, imp in sort of a little cage, we'll see the other side of that cage in one of the later sections. Um, and this room with the sort of high up imps is again it's reminiscent of the end section of E1 M2 of the original Doom. Because you then you then flick a switch at the back and two doors open. That switch. We get a yellow key and there's a monster closet behind it. Guys, out now. So it's a rocket. There we go. And that's the exit door. But it's uh, that one is a blue a blue key door. So we will need to find the blue key before we can exit. Always worth checking the switch again. Okay, so there are two places we can go. There's a door in the back of that room, but we'll go this way. Uh, we'll find that there's a walkway to the left, um, and then a couple of there's a couple of hit scanners out there, so we want to try and take them out, and um, because there are a lot of windows through this section through which they can shoot us, so we can take them out in advance. That's good. Okay, so when we take the red key, there's going to be two monster closets that open, and there's a caco in the one behind us, so we're going to take out these four and we'll sit on this side and then sort of take them out with the rockets. There we go. And just, obviously you can see there's a lot of seeing into the next section or into other sections that you're going to encounter. Um, and I think Romero has said that that was one of the key things he thought about in the change in design between doing Wolfenstein levels and doing the first set of Doom levels was that you could um, see in advance where things were so you could put secrets in plain sight and then the player had a clue of, of where they were going and also what they were going to try and get out of uh, getting out there. So obviously the, the obvious one is the armour, uh, the mega armour in the nukage pool on E1M1. This is tricky to get back across. There we go. So once we come up through this lift, there's actually a, a crowded room of monsters and there is actually a barrel next to us. So we want to try and clear out as much of this as possible so that that barrel does not explode next to us. There's the other side of that imp cage that I mentioned. There's the barrel. So if we go down here, there is an upper area where we get shot at, but we can just hide behind here and move around. Probably time for some more rockets, I'd have thought. There we go. Clear it out a bit. And once we try and take things off of this ledge at this end, this central column's going to come down just like in uh, regular E1M7. Um, but no jumping off of that into uh, and running off to get a, a soul sphere. Okay, so. Now got red and yellow now so we can backtrack a bit so here's the red door so we've got a secret behind here we get the one point of armor it's definitely important to get that uh, there's a health that we need it's the soul sphere and round on the other side we can find the green armor and the chain gun So now we're going to drop down into this area and there's going to be a lot of people teleporting in here because once we take uh, the rocket and the monster closets open as well as the teleports that are set up just for when you enter the room. So it's one of the few uses where you, you really can use the BFG just to clear the room. Um, uh, I mean, we've got enough cells here that even when we get to E1M8, hit 
hit this switch and we're going to get a pair of barons going to come down. So again, we've got uh, we've got a built up number of rockets. We might as well use them. One more. There we go. Pinky and the Spectre. Clear out the other side. Sequence of lifts here. We did that very badly. This brings us back to getting a backpack overlooking the room where we took on the two barons. So we need to go back all the way back around. there with a point blank shot from the shotgunner and through the yellow door. Computer area map again. I think there's one on every level to help you find your way through everything. But we can't actually get back out through this room so we need to go out through the other exit. Um, so incorrect backtracking. There we go. And this is going to drop us back off where we started. So this is the room that we started in. And now we go down into the final section. So we're going to have this little area that's got some hit scanners in it. So we'll try and take them out. Luckily they seem to have uh, awoken the caco demons to their detriment we can stay up here and sort of once we get into the last sort of room it's dark room with pathways through the new kidge and there's a lot of hit scanners in there so we just want to sort of try and clear our way through systematically so both of these doors lead into the same room but different sides of the same room so there we go so there's a couple more hit scanners there okay not doing too badly The blue key that we need to go out the exit door. A couple more hits going to take down Pinky. If I can even focus on him. Another shotgunner. That's this room mostly clear, I think. Then it did sound like there was someone else. Yeah, there we go. That door opened somewhere else. There's a spectre. That's quite nice lighting in that room as well. The beams of light moving across like that. That's quite nice. That door still does not open there though. Okay, we have three enemies from the end. I think there's one behind the exit door. That is fairly standard. Always check the entrance door. This is not the right way. You want to go back into the central room and then it's the lift that goes up from there. Um. Which 
definitely cleared everything out from in here. Three armor points. And here, down to the right. And down to the right again. There we go. There's one. And we hit the switch. And then we're into the last one, E1M8. So, while I said that the secret map was probably the worst map, this is the most disappointing one. Um, I quite like the way it's designed, the way it's laid out. I like that it's it's funneling us down. It's got this kind of two pillars look to it on each side. But it's just two barons, and we've just fought two barons on the previous level. You know, we're given the BFG, we've got so much armor. We've got well, armor, we've got so much ammo, we've got so much of everything else that really, I mean, you see it. It takes, takes a matter of seconds to get through it, and that, that's the end of it. So overall, I liked this wad. I didn't think it was, it wasn't that challenging, um, but it developed as it went on. Uh, the, the levels got bigger, the challenges got slightly more. Um, the main drawbacks are obviously too much ammo. It just takes the challenge out of any particular encounter that you face. Uh, and too many power-ups. There are too many soul spheres and there are too many mega armors that keep you safe. Um, I think this would be a candidate for anyone that wanted to try uh, playing a wad on Nightmare um, because I feel like there's enough ammo natively in it that for all of the crossing back you're going to do through some of the core areas when monsters resurrect, you will have enough ammo to take them on and I think that would probably more of a challenge. Um, but yeah, that was Father Beans.